This is the Euroness. It's a module I developed from the ground up to emulate the audio of a Nintendo Entertainment System. It features seven distinct voices, each with its own quirks and character, and is designed to get you up and running fast with authentically chippy tunes. This project was quite extensive, so I'll take you through a brief overview of its most important aspects, starting with the hardware. The design process began with just a sketch. I knew I wanted a screen and a couple analog inputs, but I wasn't sure how to bring everything together. After a few weeks of designing, I had arrived at this design, which has an itty bitty little screen and four analog inputs. Of course, the board I made didn't work at all, which isn't exactly unexpected with more complicated designs. After some troubleshooting, I fixed a few errors and produced a mostly working board. By this point though, I slowly came to the realization that my design wasn't all that great. The screen was far too small to be generally useful, and just four inputs is pretty limiting for a module with seven voices. So despite the very short window of time available to me, I decided to make one last revision, this time with a much larger screen, eight inputs, and two knobs. Assembling these modules is a laborious task. Most modern electronics are designed with what's called surface mount components, and my module is no exception. These components are really meant to be placed by a machine, but all I have is a pair of tweezers. So part by part, I assembled each revision in around four hours of precision work. The industrial assemblers also have big ovens that they run the boards through to melt the solder, but I just use my modified toaster oven. Great, so I've assembled my final revision, and you've seen that it produces audio. But what is it? What's driving the show? Well, normally you'd use a microcontroller for this sort of thing. A microcontroller is like a little CPU on a board with wires that you can hook up to different things, like a DAC or a knob. The Arduino boards are a very popular example. Unfortunately for me, an Arduino just isn't powerful enough. Another popular choice is the ESP32 microcontroller. It certainly has the power, but isn't quite as flexible as I'd like, and I wouldn't need its integrated Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. But there is another option. An FPGA. An FPGA is not a microcontroller. It's not even a processor. Instead, it's whatever you want it to be. It's a totally reconfigurable digital chip, and it can implement pretty much any digital function that you can dream up. Want a DSP chip? You can make it. Want to emulate the audio circuit of a 40-year-old console? Go ahead. And, well, that's exactly what I did. Thanks to the folks over at the Nestev Wiki, I was able to create a near-perfect reproduction of the NES's audio chip. Normally, this chip can produce five voices, but a few companies extended its capabilities with more voices. I chose a particular variant that has seven voices total including two normal pulse channels, two high fidelity pulse channels, one triangle, one sawtooth, and one noise channel. So if you code this up in a special language meant for FPGAs, what next? Well, the audio logic can't drive itself. It needs some sort of manager to load notes and manage musical effects. In the NES, the audio chip was connected directly to the CPU, which handled all of that. You see where this is going? Yes. It was time for me to design my own CPU. Designing a CPU can seem like a daunting task if you're not familiar with their structure. But when it comes down to it, they can actually be quite simple. My CPU only supports a subset of the features that a general purpose CPU would. And I haven't even added division yet. At 16 bits, it's somewhere between an Arduino and an ESP32. But it only runs at a measly 5 megahertz. 5 MHz isn't very good in terms of FPGA performance, let alone dedicated processor performance, so I make up for this deficiency with the flexibility of the FPGA. I added an oscilloscope module that ticks away on its own and collects samples constantly. All the CPU has to do is read the memory of the scope occasionally. I added a graphics processing unit to make drawing images to the screen quick and easy. I added an autonomous audio output section that constantly sends data to the DAC without any processor intervention at all. All of this allows the processor to focus almost exclusively on handling the music, which means better fidelity and faster response times. In order to program my CPU, I had to make my own language. 
The language is a variant of assembly with some higher level features like loops and conditional blocks. You can find its documentation at my site here if you're interested. The software of the Euronest serves to translate musical commands through MIDI or CV to the format that the NES chip can understand. For now, I'll go over the MIDI capabilities since I don't yet have any other modules to plug into it. The module can interpret five different modulation signals in addition to note on and note off, including pitch bend, vibrato, expression, pulse width, and portamento. These are what I consider the essential elements of chiptune musicality. Now, there are a few quirks for each channel. For example, the triangle channel only has one volume, so the expression input will do nothing until it hits zero, where it acts as a note-off message. The extended channels also have an extra bit of precision, meaning they can go around an octave lower than the primary channels. In the menu, you can select which MIDI channel corresponds to which voice. You can even double up voices if you like. Since each voice has a dedicated channel, it's pretty easy to get it working like a polyphonic synth. For the intro piece in this video, I whipped up a quick max patch, which groups the four pulse channels together as a single unit. In the future, I plan to write a VST that will allow you to very quickly get all sorts of neat functionality out of the device, like fake delay, easy polyphony, noise swells, and percussion, and other common chiptune techniques. After a few more months of refinement, one or two more revisions, and a nice faceplate design, I plan to sell the module. It's a bit tricky to find the right price range, and it's actually fairly expensive for me to make, relatively speaking. I'm thinking of targeting the $150 to $200 range, which isn't too expensive, and when I've packed it to the brim with great features, it ought to be a steal. I don't know how big the market is for this sort of thing, but I should be able to sell at least 100 of them. I think this project has been very successful. I find it endlessly entertaining that I can make music with this thing that I coded in my own language, running on my own CPU, on a board I designed and assembled myself. It's the culmination of my educational path, and although I learned most of it myself, I had some great help from the EPD faculty. I want to give special thanks to a couple people. To Akito, who guided me through the language of C, and in whose class I wrote a C emulator of NES audio. And, of course, to Dr. B, who helped me refine the module into something that I'm really proud of.